There's nothing like the great fresh aroma of home-baked bread and controlling all natural ingredients just can't be beat. My name is Lester and I've been baking bread for over 35 years and I'd like to share with you some of the tips I've learned over that time. You'll need a six to eight quart mixing bowl. Uh, I'm using a ceramic bowl because it retains the heat a little better than a stainless steel bowl does, um, but any bowl will do. A mixing spoon, a thermometer to measure the temperature of the water, a measuring cup, measuring spoons, just a tablespoon and a teaspoon is all you need, a knife to cut the dough, a scale if you want to use it for measuring out your dough to be equal in both pans, and then of course our bread pan. We're using a one pan loaf pan, but because whole wheat is so much denser than white flour, we're going to use uh, about two pounds of dough, a little over two pounds of dough in each pan. For our ingredients, one quarter cup of olive oil, about eight and a half cups of flour. We'll start with about three pounds. We'll end up using about maybe two pounds, 10 ounces. Uh, two teaspoons of active dry yeast, about two teaspoons of sea salt, a tablespoon of a, any sweetener. We'll use agave ne nectar today and four cups of warm water at about 115 degrees. The process we will use is called the sponge method. This optimizes the yeast metabolic activity and gives us a nice quick bread. We'll mix the water at 115 degrees. with two teaspoons of yeast. We'll just sprinkle those on the water. And then we'll put a tablespoon of sweetener in. And it doesn't have to be exact. A little bit more sweetener will make it sweeter. A little bit less may inhibit the yeast slightly. We're gonna stir that up. So the yeast is all dissolved. And then we're gonna wait and see if bubbles form to make sure that the yeast was active. Add the flour in, slowly stirring it to, so it dissolves well. And this is five cups of flour to start with to make the sponge. We will not add the salt and the oil until the next step because adding them would inhibit the growth of the yeast. Once all the lumps have disappeared, we're ready to put this on to rise. Cover and let stand for about 30 minutes or until it's doubled in size. As you can see, as I stir here, we have a spongy texture. Hence, it is called a sponge. We'll now add our oil, our salt, and we'll begin to add our flour in. We don't want to add it all quite at once because otherwise it will make the dough too hard, but we'll kind of sprinkle it on as we stir. We're ready to turn out the dough now. We'll sprinkle a little flour on our counter to prevent it from sticking, and we'll turn out the dough. Gradually, just starting the kneading process very slowly, and, and we're gonna judge to see how sticky the dough is. And if it's too sticky, we'll add a lot of flour, and if it's not too bad, we'll just add a little bit. And it's just about in between, so we just need just a little bit of dough to keep it from sticking to us and the counter. And as it gets used up here, we're going to add a little bit more flour, and a little bit more flour on the dough. And now notice that the kneading action here is I'm not pressing really hard, 
I'm just kind of rolling it along the table, uh, bringing the top of the dough across so that I don't stretch it too much. It will take about between 10 and 20 minutes to knead your dough. And this kind of depends on many factors, but patience is supreme here and keep working it until it no longer sticks to the counter after two or three kneads. So we're almost there and we're being very careful when we knead the dough not to tear it. And if we tear it, it will cause the bread not to rise as well. And we are done. So oil the bowl and then take, take your ball of dough, put it in the oil and then make sure that it's covered with the oil and we'll cover it again with our towel and let it rise for about an hour. The dough has doubled in size. We're ready to degas it, so we're just going to punch it down and get all the uh, air bubbles out of it so that we can make some more. And now I'm just going to pour it out on the counter, let it rest for a second. Well, I just put some oil in my pans and we'll just switch that around. Now, if they're nonstick pans, you really don't have to oil them. It's after they've been used for a while, sometimes there's some little cruds in there that causes the bread to stick. So we're just going to improve our pro pro probability of having the bread come out very nice and easily. Okay, once I have that ready, let's put the pans aside and we're going to um, cut our dough in half here. And just for grins, we're going to weigh that dough and make sure it's pretty even. And it's just a little bit off and that should about do it. Perfect. So these, these two uh, loaves of bread now will be very uniform in size. Now what we want to do is just um, knead them out just a little bit just to kind of get the rest of the, the gas out of there. This will give us a nice more uniform loaf. And once we've got it fully degassed, we'll make a little ball and just kind of tuck the undersides in until we have a nice clean ball on top there. Once we have a nice ball, then we, what we want to do is turn it into an, a loaf shape by just making an oval out of it. And we're just going to squeeze the two sides together like that. And then we're going to flip it over and just make sure that we don't have any seams that are open. So any kind of loose ends that might split open while we're cooking. And then we'll go ahead and push it into our pan and make sure that um, we don't have to meet all the side walls, but just so we've got a nice uh, uniform fit in the pan. Let it rise for another about 30 minutes or until we're just about double in size again. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Our bread has doubled in size and we're ready to put it in the oven. After about 45 minutes or when the bread is golden brown, go ahead and take it out of the oven. Pop them out of the pan and stick them on top to clean. 